Hello, I'm David Guthrie with His Word Lives Ministry, and I want to welcome you once again to this Christian ministry. Praise God that you decided to draw close to Him today and utilize this ministry that is spread out into the world over the internet to share Jesus, His gospel, and the Bible out into the world. Thank you so much once again for tuning in to this ministry. We're going to be in the book of 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 through 10. If you want to go ahead and start turning uh, to this scripture, we're talking about how Jesus was manifested to take away our sins. Isn't it a good thing to know that there's a way that you can be forgiven for the mistakes or sin in your life? The things that you've done out of the will of God can be forgiven if you'll get down on your knees and praise God. Praise God that He has made a way for you to be saved. And that's for you to believe and have a faith-based relationship with His Son, Jesus Christ. If you believe, you'll have a faith-based relationship. Get down on your knees right now if you know that you've never been saved. You know whether you have a relationship with God or not. And ask Him to forgive you for your sins. And tell God that you believe Jesus is His Son. That you believe in Jesus. Jesus, the Son of God, that went to the cross and died there to be a sacrifice for all the sins of the world. Because God loved the world. He made a way possible for us to be forgiven for our sins. And listen, we want to look in the book of 1 John that talks about the relationship based upon Jesus. Based upon being saved and knowing the Christ. And that now, if you've been saved, you are one of the sons of God. You're a part of the family of God. Praise God that we can be a part of His family. Before we read our scripture today, I'd like to go to God in prayer. I'd like to lift up Anna Guthrie that asked prayer for her mother that fell. And I'd like to pray for her for, for healing and for things to be uh, uh, taken care of due to this fall. I'd like to pray for Amanda Shirley who has prayer for Elizabeth who has RSV. And we want to pray for her. We want to pray for Herschel Pierce that uh, uh, has an unspoken prayer request. And we want to, we want to pray, pray for Herschel. We want to pray for Angie Evans that asked prayer for her mother. And we want to pray for Jay Kennedy that asked prayer for his mother. We want to pray for both of these mothers. We want to pray for Polly Bunyard that asks prayer for her finances and loneliness in her life. And we want to pray for Stephen Cornett who asks prayers for himself. And we want to pray for Larry Hibberts and his health and his family. And we want to pray for Josh Parker for him and his family and friends and his ministry. I'd also like to pray for Rydell Baptist Church. This is the church that we're planning in Rydell, Georgia. And I'd like to pray for God to continue to broaden and expand our church congregation and to uh, help us along the way with the building of a, a sanctuary and fellowship facility. And we want to ask prayer for Rydell Baptist Church. We want to ask prayer for this ministry, His Word Lives Ministry. This online prayer ministry, this international uh, ministry that reaches out into the world, sharing the Word of God and praying for people and uh, encouraging people to come and know Jesus in their lives. And we also want to pray for the outreach that we do uh, locally here with His Word Lives Ministry. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lift up your prayer requests. We want to pray for them as well. Dear God, we come to you, and Lord, we pray for the prayer requests that are being lifted up to you over the internet here, God. 
Uh, Lord, we pray for these that are watching and, that, and are praying, and we pray for their prayer requests. We pray for all of these things in the name of Jesus, we pray, and lift these things up to you in belief and faith that prayer makes a difference. God, we thank you for your love for us and your, your desire to help us and benefit us in our lives. We thank you for your plan of salvation. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for praying with us today. God bless you and the blessings that are coming your way. I want to read some scripture here. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, but because it knew him not. Listen up. Let me sound a trumpet. Let me raise my voice. Let me tell you something. Behold, what a relationship that we can have with God that he calls us his sons. Sons of God. You know, when we're saved, we have an inheritance. An inheritance into the family of God. We have a, a, a relationship with God Almighty that reconciles us and puts aside all of our mistakes and sins. It makes it possible for us to know God in our lives. Listen, the world will not know us and what's of us and what is important to us in the way we think, in the way we go about doing things. The world will see us as a peculiar people because it knew not God either. It never knew God. Listen, I tell you, there's a way to know God and that's to believe and have faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. Read the truth, the Holy Scriptures in the Bible and believe and have faith and apply them into your life. Verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall appear, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Praise God that there's things coming that we don't totally understand yet. But the scriptures tells us that when he appears, we shall be like him. Listen, when God the Holy Spirit comes and starts living inside of you, Christian, things start to change. There's a different disposition about you. If you'll follow God the Holy Spirit, he'll make a way that's different He'll make a disposition that's different. He'll make a physical appearance that is different than the way it was when you were in the world. Listen, I want you to know that God is going to come and we're going to be like Him in some way one day when He appears. <clears throat> and every man that has this hope in Him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Listen, you're a Christian. Do you have the hope that you'll appear like Jesus one day? If you do, and you're responding, and you're being guided, and you're listening to God the Holy Spirit in your life, He will purify you. He will make you a new creation in Christ as you're born again into the family of God. But you'll appear different, you'll be different, and you'll know and purify yourself, and know God better and purify yourself. Praise God. Praise God for the hope that we can have as Christians. Praise God for the hope of knowing our heavenly destiny and the peace that it brings inside of us of knowing how this is all going to end up. One day we're going to be with God. Praise God 
for the purity that he brings into our lives as Christians. Verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth, transgresseth also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. Listen, sin is doing things that are not the will of God. And if you do these things, it is sin. <clears throat> and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Listen, God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son. And in revealing who his son is, he made a way possible for our sins to be forgiven or taken away. And in Jesus, the only man that's ever walked upon this earth, there is no sin. <clears throat> Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Listen, I want you to know that we all commit sin, but there's a difference in committing a sin and continuously living in a sin. Listen, us that know Jesus, us that have a relationship with God, I want you to know that we don't continue to live in our sins. We turn from them. We stop doing them. And we live and, and are purified and take on more likeness of the way God would have us to live. <clears throat> And we abideth in him, and sinneth not, or do not continue to sin some, some, something that's out of the will of God. We stop doing it. We stop doing it. And we, we, we turn from it, and we stop it. We stop it. <clears throat> Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. I mean, righteousness is someone that does the right thing. He that lives a life doing the right thing is righteous. Or is the way that God says we are as Christians. <clears throat> we do the right thing. We go to the right places. We worship the right thing. We spend our time doing the right thing. We help others. We love others. We praise and glorify God. We do the right thing. We're righteous. <clears throat> he that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, came from on high and came down here in the form of a fleshly body, uh, a baby, a virgin birth, and grew up. And his, the reason for him coming here was to destroy the works of the devil, who has continuously, over and over again, Sin, 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 lie, kill, and destroy. Trying to hurt people. Trying to bring people to Him. The author and finisher of sin. Listen. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Us that have been saved and have been born again. God's seed is in us. And we live a life purifying ourselves knowing that we'll be like him one day. And if we do make a mistake, we turn from it and stop doing it. We don't continuously sin. We know that the seed of God being born again is true and effective 
and enables us to have a knowing relationship of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and that we shall be like Him because we are born of God, born again. <coughs> oh, excuse me. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Listen, I want you to know that you can tell who's of God and who's not of God. <clears throat> who does the right thing and who does not? God does the right thing. The devil does not. The children of God do the right thing. It is known that the children of God live a righteous life. Live a life where they care about making the right decision and helping others. Sharing the gospel out into the world. Telling people what it's like to be a Christian and, and be a part of the family of God. Live a righteous life. Listen, if you don't know God today, you can get down on your knees and be born again. <clears throat> you can have that seed inside of you. You can be born again into the family of God. Just get down on your knees and ask God to forgive you for your sins. Tell Him you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And tell Him you would like for Him to save you and bring you in, and make you a part of the family of God, and He'll save you. He'll save you forever and ever and ever, on into eternity in your heavenly destiny, and He'll make a change in you, and you'll see a change in you. He'll purify you. One day when you see Him, you'll be like Him. Praise God for the message today. Behold, 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 what manner of title has God put upon us, the sons of God. How much love has he put upon us to be named his sons. Thank you for being with us today. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Thank you.